Hello, my name's Lucy. Um, I've got a tripod, which is exciting. I've had a little quick test with it. Um, and so you'll actually be able to look at my chopping board rather than just sort of vaguely seeing it sideways and mostly looking across the kitchen. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Um, and today this is gonna be sort of um, bits and bobs really. Oh, and as a reminder, what I do is um, partly because uh, I'm having fun doing this, chatting to people as I cook, but if I had to do editing as well, that would make it significantly less fun and make me less likely to do it in the first place. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't do cuts or edits in these videos. I just uh, run everything straight through. Um, and that also lets you see exactly how long everything will take, which I think is useful because um, if you're watching a video where it says like, right now I'm gonna chop these potatoes and it does a quick blur of chopping. You don't know how long it takes a regular person to chop that many potatoes. Um, so I, th I think that's helpful and I can also chat as I go along. Um, so today, bits and bobs, um, I've got some tortilla chips that I want to use up, so I'm going to make some guacamole and some limey sour cream. cream. That's all uh, very easy to do. Uh, and then my HelloFresh box has come in, and I do love my HelloFresh boxes, but since the uh, since everything started um, they've occasionally been missing ingredients um, and if it's a big ingredient or an expensive thing like meat I do report it to them and then they give me a credit and that's right they're always really good about that um, they're lovely they uh, you just report it uh, through their website that uh, you're missing an ingredient uh, and they don't doubt you or anything they just get they just say oh we're very sorry and they give you a credit on your next box um, but for small things, I, I don't um, bother them. Possibly I should, um, because obviously they're a big company. Um, but at the same time, uh, mo mostly it's like, it's something that I might have in the cupboard anyway, or it's like it's missing a packet of soy sauce. And I'm like, well, I own a bottle of soy sauce. So, although part of HelloFresh's convenience is if you don't own something, like if you don't have soy sauce, then it just gets you a packet and you don't need to go and buy an entire bottle when all you needed was that one little bit. But uh, in this particular case, um, they're missing a sachet of barbecue sauce. Now I don't have barbecue sauce in the house, but I, it is very, very easy to make. I've seen people make it. I've never made it myself before, so I wanted to try anyway. So I'm gonna do that and then just put it in the fridge ready for when I make that recipe. Um, and like I say, I haven't reported it to them to get a credit because it's like, it's gonna be a sachet like that big and like you could buy an entire bottle in the supermarket for like a pound. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna fuss and get a five pound credit for something that uh, isn't worth that much money. And that, like I say, I want to try making myself anyway. But uh, we're gonna do the guacamole first. Um, and I'll just quickly go through the tortilla chips, which I made um, last week because uh, I made a sausage chili and I had them with chili. Um, and how you make them is you take tortillas, uh, you cut them into triangles, into either six or eight triangles. I did six, so they're quite a bit larger, four if you want smaller triangles. Uh, you put them on a baking tray, you drizzle over just a light, light bit of oil, um, some salt and pepper, and then sort of rub it over them. Uh, and then oven heated to 200 degrees and cook for sort of six to eight, four to six to eight minutes, depending on your size. Four to six if you've got to pick the smaller ones, six to eight if they're the larger ones. Um, wait until they start going sort of brownish and then they're done and then they keep in a container. Um, and I just did them with salt and pepper. They're very nice with paprika if you sprinkle a little bit of paprika over. Um, nigella seeds would probably work as well, or you know, like any other sort of spice that you like. Uh, might work with chili flakes. Haven't again. Haven't tried, but uh, yes. So that's those. Um, I've got them. I've got them in a tub. I've got them in a roses tub because I find uh, uh, this is Christmas sweetie tubs to be very handy. I have like a whole. Um, I've got about four in the back of a cupboard that I use to store cakes and, in this case, tortilla chips. In. So you can see them there. And like like a, a normal packet of, of six tortillas makes plenty. Um, but now I want something to eat them with, so I'm going to make guacamole. Um, and obviously, as usual, as per usual, I haven't got any items out yet because uh, I think getting out your ingredients and your cooking equipment is also part of the cooking process that, again, takes time. Um, and if you've got everything already nicely weighed out in little bowls on your countertop, um, that doesn't, I don't think that gives people an idea of how long it takes to get everything sorted. So let's go. 
Now, this particular guacamole recipe, oh, put on my apron, um, is one that I did get from HelloFresh, um, as is the limey sour cream. Uh, but guacamole, I have made, I've been to Mexico once actually on a food holiday. Um, it was fantastic. And I sadly don't remember precisely how we did it, although I do know a lot of limes and a lot of avocado was included. Uh, we made guacamole there in one of the cooking lessons. It was fantastic. Uh, Mexico is a wonderful place. There was lovely people and the food was delicious. Um, so I, I do sort of, oh, the, the flight was a killer though, because I live in the UK. It was a 10 hours out and 10 hours back. Um, it even have been 11 hours. It was, that's an, abs that's an absolute killer. That's, uh, especially since I bought like the cheapest possible tickets. <laughs> so I'm sitting uncomfortably with other people and the chair barely reclined and it was exhausting. So that, was, that, that bit wasn't great. But the actual country was lovely. Um, although really, really hot. Like I do not own light enough because I, like I say, I run cold. I do not own light enough clothing to exist in Mexico. Uh, we went, we started in Mexico City and went to Pueblo and Oaxaca. And um, by the time we were, Mexico City is in the mountains, so it's, um, it's got some altitude. So it was hot, but like not unbearably so. But by the time we got in, and it, I was in, this was in like November as well. And by the time we got uh, down to the coast um, at sea level, it was so hot. It was just, it, like even with the, uh, it, the air conditioning running in the room, it was just, Anyway, um, enough reminiscing about my holiday. So, my, like I say, this guacamole recipe is um, based on the one that HelloFresh do, but uh, it's not that different from a authentic, authentic Mexican recipe. But um, it, ta it tastes good, which I think is always the main thing. Right, so, need a chopping board. I keep my chopping board on top of the fridge um, to be out of the way. Need my knife for chopping, and we've got two avocados, a nice, a nice tub for the guacamole to go in, a fork for mashing, and then there's a lime which is in the cupboard somewhere, and some sour cream which I did buy. Where did I put it? some sour cream oh with some spring onions some spring onions and a lime and we're also going to need a juicer we need to zest the lime. The way to do this, um, if you don't own a specific lime zester, and if you do, because I do own one, because I picked one up uh, years ago, um, and never use it, because the best thing to do is to use the small side of a cheese grater. Uh, and if you've got one of the cheese graters which conveniently has a tub, I used to have one of the square ones because that, that was the kind my mum always had and then when I went to university and we had to get me things they got me a square cheese grater and it's so bloody awkward to use um, in terms of getting the cheese out whereas this like I've got and it's, it's not just got this has got two lids well it's got three lids actually it's got this small one it's got the big side of a cheese grater and it's got a plastic lid so you can store cheese in it this is much more convenient if you're picking a cheese grater pick one that's like this and so it's that and I've realized I actually need two tubs and I've realised that for once, oops, because I was just doing a little thing, um, I need to wash my hands. Normally, I, uh, I do the washing up uh, before I cook, but I didn't need to uh, today because I didn't, uh, I did it last night. So, um, so I have to specially wash my hands rather than just have my hands be washed as part of the uh, washing up process. Right, that's everything that I need. Uh, and now let's try tipping this down. I did have a go with this earlier, so let's see if it works again. And I need to turn the lens so that I can see. Although it does make it upside down. Oh, there's, oh, no, there's pointing at the chopping board. All right, so this is gonna be upside down. And yeah, you're gonna lose my face coming into the frame, but on the plus side, you can actually see the chopping board properly. 
Right, so first thing to do is avocados uh, into small pieces, which are going to be mashed. Oh gosh, that was a, there was a loud gust of wind whistling past then. It's very windy out today. Right, and round we go. And an avocado, and then do the... Which, the I got that quite deep, it still doesn't leave it out, but it means you can poke the... Uh, you can poke the point of the knife and then try and... Now I've, now I've broken the avocado seed. So that's uh, less helpful. There's a wonderful joke that I saw, and sadly I don't remember who said it um, to, uh, to credit it. It was somebody on Twitter, which was like, open an avocado, got the toy inside again. Another wooden ball, very disappointing. I thought that was hilarious. Um, so uh, if you can find out who said that, oh, see that one came out easily. All right, there we go. I thought that was hilarious. Um, there we go, no, come on. I've never had the seed split before, but never mind. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Right, and do, 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 do. these are nice and soft. I bought them ready ripe um, on Tuesday. It is now Thursday, sort of middle of the day. So ready ripe keeps for like it says use as soon as possible really it, it keeps but this is kept like two days quite nicely. This can go in here. This can go in here. I really should get a tub for putting rubbish in when I'm doing uh, doing things without without a uh, convenient bag to throw the rubbish in. So do 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 peel off the flesh, peel, peel off the skin, very rough skin. This one's got like, you can see a little bit of a divot there, a bit of a thing there, and that's where the stem is. So you just, it's, it's an, an avocado is so light and soft to cut, it's so easy. And even if, it, if it's a little bit bruised, it doesn't matter. Um, it's still perfectly fine. So slicey, 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 choppy, 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 choppy. Into there, into there into there, into there. And like I say, this requires two avocados, uh, a lime, some spring onions, basically two spring onions, and then 75 ml of sour cream. And then the limey sour cream also uses the lime and uh, 75 ml of sour cream as well. So you basically, you can get a tub of 150 ml of sour cream, and pour about half into each. And we just want to put as you can see, all of the uh, all of the avocado into this tub because then I'm going to mash it with my fork. Right, that's all in there. So I'll split it up with my fingers and then do this and get the seed out somehow because I've absolutely messed that up. And like this, this has got a bit of avocado kept in it, so you can just poke it off with your thumb and pop it in there. Don't waste, don't waste anything. And because it's because this is so soft, honestly, I'm just going to peel it, poke it, and then oh, there we go. Just grab that. Right, there we go. And my hands are very slippy as well because avocados are a very a very slippery beast. Right, into there it goes. Into there it goes. Into there it goes. And this will also. Um, it's fine. It's this will keep in the fridge for like a couple of days. I, I should probably say a day or two for safety, it, um, but like I, I found like three or four days is also fine. But uh, that that depends on your tolerances. It does tend to go brown on the top, but it'll stay green underneath. So you can sort of. I mean, I, honestly, I just eat the brown. But uh, if if that really puts you off, you can scoop the brown off the top and then eat the lower layer. Uh, that's not it necessarily. It, well, it will go off, but the brown isn't reacting to the oxygen in the, in the air in the same way that uh, if you chop an apple, it'll start going brown very quickly. Right, so that's the avocado. Uh, for the lime, we're going to want the juice and the zest separately. Um, it is much easier to zest a lime uh, before it is juiced. So what you do, and also this is a trick I learned at the cookery school, is you put the, is you just roll the lime. This means that when you come to juice it, and you only do it for a second or two, and just a, just a, a reasonably a reasonably light pressure. 
Um, it means when you come to juice it, it um, it's juicier. Anyway. You can... Yeah, just zest and just zest all over, and you can see it's. I keep holding it up the screen. You can see it's uh, it's coming off like that. So it's sort of white. You'd have to try quite hard to get the pith in. Uh, so don't worry about that. Obviously, the pith will be sour. The pith's the white bit. Hence, taking the pith jokes. And yeah, just. Just tilt it at all angles so that you've got the zest for them from the entire lime. And so now that lime is fairly well zested, you can see. If you if you're really picky, you could go and try and get all of it, but it uh, doesn't actually matter too much for this. Now the lime cut in half, um, and we're going to use half the lime. I mean, lime juice is to taste very much in uh, in this, so just start off, and you won't need more than half because you probably don't want it to be too sour. So, juice the lime, juice the lime, juice the lime. One of my exes had um, an electric juicer, so when you push down it, it spun on its own. Uh, and it was very good for juicing things, but like it, Unless you're making like orange juice, like a large batch of it, it felt like a bit of a waste to do it for just like half a lime for juice that you're going to put in your cooking. Um, it felt like a, like, because it looked exactly like this, so it required exactly the same amount of cleaning. So it's just like, I'll just get in, get, get in all in one and won't bother fishing it out of the cupboard. But it was very nice for making uh, orange juice, right, so. And obviously, because this obviously catches the pips, which obviously you don't want, but I do like putting the pith, uh, not the pith, the pulp of the lime in as well that comes out, so I always do that. Um, and then, so clean the pulp into it. If you don't like the pulp, obviously, then don't do that. So that's ready to go. Now we want to uh, just wipe. For things that aren't meat, for things like juice, I've got a kitchen cloth and I wipe, which is different to a tea towel, it's a thicker, heavier material. Um, and obviously, I do wash it, but I don't wash it every day um, so if you're just wiping off um, a little bit of lime juice like I was there it's just just it's just a useful way of drying your hands and also for hot, handling hot items that's what that's for all right so I've got my spring onions here And two spring onions and these are all different sizes um, so I'm going to pick these two and put the others back in the fridge um, and I like spring onions and there's again the HelloFresh things a lot of the meals I pick tend to be meals which is always sprinkle spring onions on top and they'll give you one or two quite small spring onions so I do like to have a bag of spring onions um, to scatter on top of things in my fridge and often I don't use all of them because you can only find really spring onion in quite large bunches you don't need all of them um, I think these are also called scallions in America, maybe. Um, but I don't, so I don't need all of them. So I just, um, I do end up wasting them, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, yeah. So top and tail, and you can cut very far into the green part, but I do prefer the white parts. So I usually cut up to just the point where it's starting to split into many stems. I will also often uh, take off the, just the top layer, because again, you supposed to wash vegetables what I do is just take off the top take off the top layer uh, so that you've got the uh, like the rough outer layer that's been exposed to the air um, and the dirt and things you take those off so that's all off and now just start thin slicing and this is this is about the right amount of sprinkling for what I'm doing just thin slice thin slice thin slice thin slice and these are just gonna go go in after we've done the mashing add a bit of bite and a bit of flavour. Right, there we go. So spring onions done. So that's everything we need now. Now we just need to bring it all together. So a uh, tub of avocado, mash, and this is nice and soft. If it's too hard to mash properly, that's again, that's a shame, but I, I already went on my, on my salmon video. I already went on my thing of uh, sometimes you buy an avocado and it's hard and then there's nothing you can do except buy a different avocado. So just 
but this is nice and just smushes nicely and you can just turn it into a paste paste very easily and again this is why I leave the uh, leave the uh, camera on while I do this so you can see how long how long it takes to uh, smush it to avocados and you can see it's not long at all it, mu it mushes very easily I'm, I'm using very little pressure um, and just stir it around to get all of the lumps out. You could use potato masher but that feels like overkill quite honestly and then I'd have to wash a potato masher uh, afterwards whereas um, this is like I said this is going to be with chips if this was with a, like a meal like a chilli where you put it on top obviously I'd then be eating the chilli and you could just use this fork to eat the chilli with But yes, uh, I, I do like a guacamole. Just uh, watching, not long back, I was watching it to Tax Master and the rest of being it. I can't remember what the best thing, it might have been the best ring thing, I can't remember, but uh, uh, Kelly Godleyman bought in some guacamole because who doesn't like guacamole and Greg Davis was not impressed. Okay, so as you can see, there's a few little bit bigger lumps, but again, because it's all so soft, it doesn't actually, it doesn't matter. They're not going to, you're not going to stumble across them and go, oh, that's unpleasant. You're just, just going to eat them and not notice. Right, so that's that. And so now we add spring onion. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Splash of lime juice, I won't add it all right now. And the sour cream, about 75 mils. I'm going to get a little spoon out for this. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And it, it is sort of pourable, but the top has gone solid and I didn't shake the tub so. Just gonna scrape out about half the tub and bear in mind because the tub tapers slightly, so it won't it'll be sort of more like a bit over a third than all the way down the tub, so that's that. And we're also gonna want to add just a hint of salt and a much smaller hint of pepper. And then just stir, 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 stir. Stir it all through. Once I've done that, then I'll adjust sour cream, salt, pepper, and lime juice to taste. And that will be the guacamole. See that? See how simple that was? See how quick that was? Um, and you don't need to, I'm fairly sure that when I was in Mexico, you didn't put the sour cream in the guacamole, but uh, I, I, did, I did find this. It, it, they, a, it um, increased the amount of guacamole to avocados made, which is handy. Um, but it was also, I, I think it does add to the taste. So, uh, it's, it's very much an as you wish sort of situation. Right, I'll try it. That's nice. I think it just needs a touch more lime and a touch more salt. And that's perfect. And I have realised I've done this the wrong way around. So if I'd done the barbecue sauce first, I could then have done this for the five minutes while the barbecue sauce was cooking. Whereas now we're going to have to sit around um, while the barbecue while the barbecue sauce cooks. But anyway, that's that. And then I'm just going to because I put it on the chop. Normally I would do this on the side, but because I'm showing you, I put it on the chopping board, and that means it's now got avocado off the bottom of it. So I'm just going to wipe that. So that goes in the fridge. Just now, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat this in a minute, but obviously because I'm doing doing the barbecue sauce, I don't want everything to do it. So, and then the sour cream is lime zest, sour cream, salt and pepper, with possibly a little splash of lime juice. So, the rest of the sour cream goes in here. There we 
marker, just scrape everything out so there's no waste, and then that I can wash out and put in the uh, recycling. And then we scrape in the uh, scrape in the lime zest. And that's going to go into the washing up. I'm going to just use the last little bit of lime juice. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put in much lime juice because A, it would make it too sour and B, it would make it too runny. But then, salt. Just a little, little scrape of black pepper. I think slightly more black pepper than that. There we go. And then mix it all up. And that could do with a bit more lime. So the other half of lime. If you don't use the other half of lime, obviously you can put it in a little tub or a bag, keep it in the fridge. Um, but I'm going to use this, although it won't take all of it. Um, so, oh, and a little more lime juice. A little more salt. Again, that's going to go in the fridge. And that's all ready. I might go and uh, eat my snack afterwards. Now we put things in the bin. Bin, 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 bin. keeping the lime juice that's going to go down the sink and all of these can be going the washing up And now there's the barbecue sauce. And I'm going backwards and forwards on this because barbecue sauce, I'm gonna say hello. Barbecue sauce, I've looked for recipes online. Every single recipe is different. A lot of them are completely different to the using different types of sugar and different types of vinegar. So um, I'm just gonna sort of mix and match based on what I have in my cupboards and what I like. Um, some of them call for like fresh garlic. Now, the thing I'm going to have the garlic, garlic sauce with already has garlic in it. So I'm probably not going to put fresh garlic in, but I think I do have some garlic granules in the cupboard, so I may chuck some garlic powder in. Uh, but if that's the case, then nothing needs chopping, so I can just take the chopping board away. Um, so also what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try now filming from a different angle, so I'm going to try putting this over here. Now this obviously is far too tilted down now, so I'll up and there. And we'll see what filming from this angle is like. So I'm just going to take away the uh, chopping board. And this hasn't got dirty, so this can go back up where it lives on the fridge. This can go in the wash. And then Make your barbecue sauce, I think we can just do very easily just in a saucepan, uh, poking things around with a wooden spoon, and then the only thing we're going to need is a tablespoon of salt for all the ingredients. Now, things that are required for barbecue sauce tomato ketchup is the main one. I've got some group somewhere. Uh, there's a call 
for smoked paprika, which I do have in here somewhere. Well, I've got paprika. I've probably got smoked paprika as well, but paprika's at the front. So that's convenient. Do I have garlic? I definitely have had a garlic at one point. My spice cupboard is not well organised. And also I have to crouch, which isn't good for my knees, because I am terribly unflexible. Oh, we do have. Found the smoked paprika. Cloves, cinnamon, cloves. I did try organising it in alphabetical order, but then I get new spices and didn't have an easy way to fit them in. So now everything's just uh, all all healed and pickled and everything. I have two tubs of smoked paprika because clearly I bought some and I couldn't remember that I owned some. Garlic granules, there we are. Right. Smoked paprika, garlic granules, tomato ketchup, uh, molasses or black treacle. Um, I do have black treacle, it is somewhat out of date. I'm going to use it um, because mostly sugar things are generally fine. Um, and then I'm going to throw it away and buy a new tin to keep in the cupboard. So I've got my, my black treacle. Um, I did put a list of the various things here. So I need vinegar, sugar, honey, Worcestershire, must, must, yeah, Worcestershire sauce and also some mustard powder. Uh, mustard powder, Coleman's. Not sponsored. Yeah, and honey. I do have some fancier honeys that I bought um, from the, the people near us that do, there's a farm shop near us that does honey. So I do have some fancy honeys, but I think for this I won't use the fancy honey because they're very strongly flavoured. Um, and I think this morning it's more of a neutral honey. So neutral honey. Worcestershire sauce is in here. Liam Perrins as as required. Um, I'm going to go with white wine vinegar. And brown sugar. It's kept in a quite a high cupboard and I've now knocked everything over. Well, Some muscovado sugar. This is not the right sugar. I've also got like five different kinds of sugar because at one point I was doing a lot of baking um, and all the different recipes say like, oh, we we'll use this kind of sugar. Oh, we we'll use this kind of sugar. And obviously, you never use a whole packet up. put these all back away. There we go. Go. There we go. Right. Let's go out sugar. All right, just uh, check on my uh, recipe notes again. So ketchup, vinegar, sugar, molasses, honey, or vegetable oil, but that's just on the side there, but next to where the cooking things are. What is your sauce? Mustard powder, black pepper, pepper smoked paprika. And in terms of amounts, because I, because like I say, I need a sachet for this, but then I always find that the sachets are a little bit ungenerous. Um, and obviously, um, if I don't use all of it up, I can, uh, like more of it means more flavour than if I don't use all of it up. I can just uh, keep, in, keep it in the fridge um, and use it for dipping other things in. So, I think we're gonna go for about 300 grams, for not 300 grams, this, this recipe is 300 grams. I'm gonna go with, uh, the recipe I'm, I'm sw swapping between to get all the various items is one called Kitchen Sanctuary, which is a blog, I don't know anything about it, and one from uh, Barry Lewis, from when he made popcorn chicken. Um, and I'm using some sort of various combination of ingredients there. And the, his was, his, Barry Lewis's is a small one, using 130 grams of ketchup, um, and two tablespoons of things, 
uh, th this use the other one is um, 300 grams and uses sort of four to five tablespoons of things. So um, yeah, I'm going to basically go with 150 grams and half the amounts of tablespoons in the kitchen one where it's calling for things that Barry doesn't call for and otherwise. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So that's that. Um, so the only thing I need to weigh is the ketchup. Everything else is like I say in tablespoons. They also use to measure the tablespoons in cups, and I'm like, oh, put ketchup is very sticky. I'm not putting it in a cup. And then, you know, so I've got scales, um, and the other thing about these scales is, there we go, is that you can set them to zero. So this is on zero now. So now I just need 150 grams of this. So even 150 grams is going to make quite a lot of sauce. garlic granules um, this would normally be a clove of garlic I'm gonna go with uh, I like garlic but like I say it's also gonna be garlic in the main dish so I'm gonna go with just one teaspoon that's out the way smoked paprika uh, again I, I like smoked paprika and I like things quite small strong and smoky so I'm gonna go with uh, one and a half teaspoons ingredients first so that I don't put wet spoons in them. Mustard powder half a teaspoon. So, this is a new tub because um, I wanted mustard powder for I'm going to make macaroni cheese at some point. Oh macaroni cheese. I've bought lots of different types of cheese to put in it's going to be a very luxurious macaroni cheese and one of the things that my macaroni cheese needs is also is mustard powder and when I picked up the mustard powder it'd been so long since I'd used it uh, that the tub had actually rusted. Um, out at the bottom of the side, so I have to buy a new tub. So this one is I've got to open it up. Oh, that's nice. Half a teaspoon of this. It's and these because these are proper measuring teaspoons. It's a level teaspoon. And there's mustard powder. Right, let's this. Uh, molasses is definitely going last. Okay, and sugar for the last dry one. And this should be two and a half. Spoons. Yeah, two and a half tablespoons sounds like the right amount for this amount of ketchup. Again, because this this is also a thing that like I've not made this before. Um, I know some people are very proud of their barbecue sauce recipes, and this is why there's so many different slight variations on it. Um, so it's all very much to taste, um, but I don't know how this is going to taste. So this is just me trying it. So that was all, all so previously been using teaspoons, this is tablespoons, so it's two and a half tablespoons of sugar. So teaspoons for stronger stronger flavourings, tablespoons for the um these bits, so two and a half, so one. And you can see how love oh and you can't see because uh, I'm at the wrong angle for it, but it's uh, lovely and brown muscovado sugar, so that's two and a half. And then Worcestershire sauce. Is it gone? There it is. 
Now I bought a new one uh, of my Worcester sauce because I love my limpers because it lasts a good long time. I have to, I have been using through it. I've been using through this one for multiple years now. I put it in tomato soup. It's so nice and just like store bought cream of tomato soup, bit of cheese, bit of lean pear. It's fantastic. Um, and I put it on cheese on toast. And so very gradually, I finally got down to it being the bottom of it. And to make sure I don't run out, I bought a new bottle, <laughs> which I haven't opened yet. Very minimum a tablespoon, um, one or two tablespoons. I'm going to go with one and a half. So there's one, there's a half. And that's done. Now I leave those leaning on the edge so they don't drip everywhere. Get mine. And now it's going to be two tablespoons of vinegar. I've got stuff on these spoons now. So I'm going to wash them before I put them into the treacle. Oh, the lid is also very stiff. It's a really mess. Ah, there we go. So, about so two tablespoons of this. One. Sprinkle of black pepper and then the honey. Yeah, the honey is one and a half tablespoons. Um, what I'm also going to do is because honey and also black treacle stick to spoons, I'm going to use a trick that um, my mother always used to use. Uh, I'm going to wash these spoons off. with a gas hob, which is what I've got, uh, is you shove the spoon into the flame. My, um, my hobs take a little off catch. Right. You shove the spoon into the flame and heat it up. And that makes it much easier to get the, uh, make the honey drip out. Honey or golden syrup or molasses drip out of it. Just standing here with a spoon. And you basically, you, just, you don't need to get it red hot, you just sort of run it through the flame for a few seconds. And then in comes the honey. And hopefully, out slides the honey. You see how that slid out, and it's not uh, not stuck in the spoon. I need to do that again. Obviously, be careful with hot spoons. So I need to do that again with the half tablespoon because I'm doing one and a half tablespoons. And you just have to do the bowl of the spoon. Right there, that's enough. Come on. And because this is cheap honey, it's a, a lot of it's crystallised. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And to uncrystallise honey, by the way, you um, you put it in hot water. And there we go. And again, it just drips out of the spoon. Nice. There we go. 
And I'm going to wash these, do the same thing again with the treacle. up again um, and I don't want to burn the residue of honey onto the spoons which is what will happen if you heat up a dirty spoon. Um, which seems obvious but I should say it. Right and the amount of black treacle I want is one tablespoon and then like I say this this tub's quite old I'm gonna throw it away and I'll put it on my, and I'll put on my shopping list. now so I don't forget. I basically I keep, I make my shopping list before I go shopping but as I, because I'm not going shopping only every two or three weeks, uh, if I notice I'm out of something as I go around the, uh, go around the kitchen I write it on my, on my uh, bit of paper by the door and so when I come to my shopping list I've got a list of all the things I know I need to add. But I do that because otherwise what I do is I go constantly going, oh, I must not forget to put this on my shopping list, I must not forget to, to buy that. Which when I was going shopping once, maybe twice a week, that was fine. If, if it was still a bit irritating, I did used to write stuff on my hands a lot. For three weeks, um, I'm going to forget. So there, so getting the lid off tree close done by levering it with a spoon, the end of a spoon. There we go, Ooh, there we go. And yeah, I'm going to take one tablespoon of this. does it plunge it in pull it out and this is a very over full spoon as well but, uh, so it's more like one and a half anyway and then but because it was so hot it was actually not going into the bowl of the spoon properly but there we go drip out all of this lovely lovely black treacle that smells very strong There is, uh, that didn't work as well for pouring out the spoon. It's just, it's, uh, this is even. If I had like a squeezy bottle of that, which I don't think they do, they do squeeze because golden syrup you used to only be able to get in tins like that. Um, and then I started putting it in a squeezy bottle, which was much better. Um, but there we go. And there we go. Right. So all of those things can go ready for a wash. Throw this away and buy a new one. So I'm, gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna put the lid back on so it doesn't leak everywhere, and I'm gonna put it by the bin. It's quite heavy, so I don't want to tear through the bag. Right. So now that's um, all of our ingredients, and that's gonna make a good lot, although it is gonna boil down a bit. So I'm gonna stir that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it onto heat, um, and it should take five minutes. So I'm just going to pop it on the heat for five, like a medium heat for five minutes, medium to low. Um, and tidy up as and, and give in occasional pokey stir as I do. So that on there, five minute timer starts. And give it a good stir for the first 30 seconds to get it going. See if it warms up. And yeah, that's going to be way more barbecue sauce than I need for my purposes. That's good because it's all just flavour. That's, there. That's going to be where it goes once it's cooled down a bit. Stir, stir, stir. Okay, and now leave to go away as I put it away. Pass over to the mustard, the garlic, the spare spare paprika. fridge. It's 
also putting away and washing up are also part of cooking. Obviously, if you live with supper. Um, the rule I always had was whoever does the cooking, the other person does the washing up. Obviously, if you've got very small children, uh, then washing up might need to be a supervised activity uh, to make sure that nothing gets smashed. But uh, older children or partners, um, you cook, they do the washing up. That is, that is the rule. It is a good rule uh, that prevents uh, arguments and resentments. Right, so... But as I live alone, um, it is my responsibility to do everything. Because otherwise, uh, it won't get done. Oh. So, I'll put everything away. I'll give the side a quick wipe. already standing on it. Oh, that's bubbling nicely on. So I'll leave you over, leave you over there. We've got a lift here, so you could have sort of seen. That's bubbling at the corners. Oh, and spill this all out, but that's bubbling at the corners nicely. So I'll give it more of a stir and turn the heat down. No, that's about as good an angle as you can get with uh, this height. So. So now that's going to need to be wiped up again as well. So I'll leave that until I've done the rest of the, uh, until the heat's off and the stove top's cooled down. But uh, yes, lots of nice wiping. Wipe down. down the side and I've just got the washing up to do. Stir, stir, stir. Yeah, just make sure you keep it stirring. You don't have to stir, it's not a thing that it's stirring constantly, but make sure you move it around every, every uh, 30 seconds to one minute, just so this doesn't burn at the bottom, because it's, uh, you can see it's bubbling at the edges, which is going to give it Nice, which shows it's cooking nice and properly, but uh, means it could burn to the pan. Right, so that's wiped up. Stir, stir, bubbles. Can't wait to taste this and see what it's like. very thoroughly bubbly there. So I'm going to move it off the hot hob. And what I'm now going to let that do is let that cool um, before I put it in my plastic tub because otherwise the plastic tubs uh, react badly. Oh, I forgot the oil. Oh, never mind. Well, it seems to have bent, blended together. Well, that was, that was because I stacked everything else out, said, oh, the oil's on the side anyway. Um, then went through everything I got stacked on the side and didn't uh, think of the oil, which I hadn't specifically moved into view. Um, but it seems to have bonded well anyway. 
because I think the oil's not for flavour, the oil's just for bonding. And it seems pretty slick, and it's the thing I need it for, it's going to need to be runny anyway. So, as I say, I'm going to let this cool, because if you put it straight in the plastic tub, the plastic tub gets um, stuff melted. It doesn't melt in a way that's harmful, but it sort of... It doesn't like it, and the, the plastic gets rough, and then it's hard to clean. So, uh, I'm going to leave that cool. I'm going to do the washing up. Um, and once... I've done the, uh, so yeah, once I've done the washing up, I'll put that away in the fridge to cool. Um, and then I will uh, eat my tortilla chips with guacamole and sour cream. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here, uh, let you sit here through the cooling, because I don't know how long that's going to take. And part of the cooling is going to be while I'm eating, so that would be uh, very, very dull indeed. So uh, yeah, I'll do the washing up now. Uh, and then I will eat and then I will fill you in on how my guacamole and lime cream tasted. So, bon appetit. So I've had the uh, dip with my, uh, the two different dips with, with my tortilla chips and they were both very nice. Uh, they both came out very well. They're both delicious uh, and they taste different. So you can sort of dip, with, dip in one and eat and then dip in the other and eat with a different chip and go between them. And yes, I very much enjoyed that. And they're exactly as good as I thought they were going to be. Very pleased with that. So that's good. Um, and then uh, the barbecue sauce, I did let it cool down and I did have a taste of it. Um, and it's one of those things where you, where like a lot of like chefs say, oh, well, you taste it as you go along and see, and then maybe you can adjust it. And I'm just like, it's really, really hot and I'll burn my tongue, even if I'm really careful. So I, I basically, I don't like tasting, taste testing very hot things. I prefer to just estimate and then add salt when it's cool or whatever. Um... But no, I, ha I had a taste when it was cool, and it's definitely barbecue sauce. It's very strong. Um, I do I do like it, though. It does taste nice. It's a bit grainy, a bit gritty. I think I could have uh, cooked it for slightly longer, but I think it's going to end up being heated up again for whatever it is I use it for uh, later on. So that's going to be fine. And yeah, that came out really, really well for something I've not made before, but it's, it's definitely barbecue sauce. Um, so yeah. Uh, and... Uh, that's it for now, so bye-bye.